And we are now joined by the very best in the market covering Auburn, both recruiting and team, Justin Tokenson from Auburn Live. Justin, how we doing, man? Big day the other day. Yeah, man. What's up, J.D.? What's new? Man, not a lot besides the SEC schedule in the 2024 season. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. The The Tigers are going to welcome Oklahoma to Jordan-Hare. Just what are your initial reactions, thoughts, concerns about Oklahoma and Auburn squaring off here in 24? Well, um, it's exciting, right, um, You know, to be able to play one of the newcomers right off the bat and to get them in, in Jordan-Hare is cool. Um, whether it would have been Oklahoma or Texas, I don't think it would have mattered. So um, I think that's just a – Cool opportunity for for Auburn um, to host Oklahoma um, in Hugh Freeze's second season. The rest of the schedule, you know, you got Alabama and Georgia as, as you normally do. You've got A and M and Arkansas, who you've been playing. Um, really, the biggest differences in the twenty four schedule. Now, granted, we don't know past twenty four because it could go to nine games, but just for twenty four, no LSU for the first time since nineteen ninety one. Uh, no Ole Miss for the first time since 1989, and no Mississippi State for the first time since 1954. So those three teams were always a part of the West in the new SEC, but even going back, Auburn played the, the Mississippi schools a ton. It's the first time that they won't play one of those three since like the 30s. So that's the biggest difference is not having Ole Miss, Mississippi State, or LSU on the schedule. And that LSU game really had grown into a really awesome rivalry since the mid '90s, really took off in the 2000s with uh, with Tuberville and Saban, and, and just had some classics over the years. So you take that one out, you move Oklahoma in, which is a new one. But Auburn fans, I mean, the new age of college football—they're not too attached. I mean, they're attached to Georgia, Alabama. I think they'd like to see Florida a little bit more, but past that, I think they like how it sort of shaped up in that season. Vanderbilt, Kentucky, Missouri. Uh, the other teams on there so I think they're happy it's one of those things Justin you and I talked before we even got on air here and it's like yes it's exciting and it's going to be awesome to have Oklahoma and Texas in the SEC but we still don't really know what this thing's going to look like when it's in its permanent model like this, this is just kind of a stopgap but regardless I'm excited to see the matchups we get with Texas and OU joining the SEC. Uh, we got to talk about this though for the 2023 season Jarquez Hunter there's some questions around his availability what would a Jarquez Hunterless Auburn team look like should they not have him early on in the year? Oh, yeah, it changes the dynamic quite a bit of what we think Auburn can do. Um, and again, there's a lot there's a lot unknown. We just know that Jarquez Hunter is involved in a university investigation. Past that, we really don't know many details. And so until we do, we have to at least talk about the fact that he might not be available when August fall camp starts. And if he's not practicing, then what? So like until we have a cleared statement from the university, um, we don't know. So if he were to not be available for a game or multiple games or whatever, if, if, if Auburn rolls in there and we're not sure about him, changes a lot. I mean, Damari Alston's a sophomore with just a couple of carries as a true freshman. Um, Brian Batie coming over from South Florida is a talented kid, but he's small. He's, he's an elusive speed back. He's a buck 70, maybe. Um, and so Jarquez Hunter is an all-around guy, powerful, fast, cash out of the backfield, all SEC type back. If he's not available, that changes everything. So we're kind of just waiting and seeing right now. You know, we're just we're 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 just sort of waiting to see if uh, if he's cleared. Let's get to August one and see what the status is if he's practicing. If we get to that point and we start fall camp and he's not out there, then I think we start going. Okay, fall camp starting and he's not available. Now we have to start considering: is he going to be there for game one or game two against Cal? Well, the running game, obviously a huge part of what Auburn's going to do offensively in this new RPO scheme under Hugh Freeze, but almost as important is going to be whoever is on the other side of catching those passes, likely from Peyton Thorne, maybe Robbie Ashford, but who do you expect to be, you know, one of those guys that steps up as a pass catcher or the premier pass catcher for Auburn in 23? Uh, well, one guy I wrote about actually this week at AuburnLive.com, one of them is Rivaldo Fairweather, who's a tight end from Florida International that they brought in. 6'5", 250, has only played football for four or five years of his life, um, but played basketball, played soccer in high school, super athletic, super raw. That kid's got NFL potential written all over him. Um, and so he's going to be really interesting to see, is he involved in just the red zone or is he involved all the way up and down the field? He's a guy that's going to be a big target. Then I think you look at somebody like Shane Hooks coming in from Jackson State, who's 6'5". Jair Shorter coming in from North Texas, who's 6'2 plus and caught 
I think half his catches were touchdowns last year. He's a guy to watch out for. Um, and then maybe somebody like Javaris Johnson, who's been around Auburn for a few years and is that slot, speedy slot guy. I think he's a guy that could catch a lot of passes for Auburn as well. Um, I think there's a lot to be determined on. I don't know that there will be a premier pass catcher. I'm not, I mean, maybe. I feel like you've got some guys that can maybe turn into reliable guys across the board, but I would probably start with those four. Um, Fairweather, Hooks, and Shorter at receiver, and then and then Javaris Johnson in that slot, and then go from there. There's some other guys that have got a chance, but I think those four is probably where I'd start. If you're looking for – if it's third and seven, where are you going? Um, I think you've got some options. Javaris Johnson across the middle, a fast guy that can get open, and then you've got some – Fairweather hooks. You've got Nick Marner from Cincinnati. You got some height there potentially too. Camden Brown's a guy that's got, that's super talented. Um, played last year. Let's see how he comes on. But he's he's ultra talented too. Kind of gets lost in the sauce a little bit because he's not a transfer. So he's a guy to watch as well. So big big summer and fall camp ahead to to try to develop one or two receivers that you can rely on in those tense moments in SEC Justin, games. I know you and I were talking about it even when Camden Brown was a freshman, like all the rumblings about his potential and his skill set and what he could be. So if you were able to turn a corner and be someone to add into the mix with all those transfers, I know Auburn fans would uh, be very, very excited about that, to say the least. Well, Justin Hokinson from Auburn Live, the best in the business covering Auburn. Justin, we appreciate you, man. Uh, excited to talk about the SEC schedule in 2024 when it gets here, but I'm sure we'll talk about 23 here with you very, very soon. Uh, thanks for coming on the roundtable. No doubt. Anytime, CJD. Auburn fans, if you like that video, go get a membership over at Auburn Live. Going to keep you in the know for all things revolving around your Tigers. Also, subscribe right here to the On3 Roundtable YouTube channel.